So, so now we've got who's on Medicare and how you get in Medicare. Uh, what, what is Medicare? Medicare is insurance. It's not a social program. It, is, it requires the payment of co-payments and deductibles, uh, and it has premiums. Medicare is actually divided into two parts. Uh, original Medicare, as it was created and still the basis of the program, is Medicare Part A and Part B. Part A of Medicare is funded by withholding from working people's salaries. Uh, I believe it's 1.45% an individual pays in as they work, an employer makes a matching payment, and this money accumulates to pay for Part A services for an individual when they become eligible for Medicare. In order to qualify for Medicare and have a free premium, you have to have contributed 40 quarters, 10 years, into the system, and actually it also can be a working spouse that uh, contributes. You, you, a, a spouse that stays home can draw on the work history of a spouse, or a disabled child can dr draw on the work history of a parent. Uh, so we have this work history, which yields, for those that have 40 quarters, Part A at no premium. Now, it's not free. If you do not have 40 quarters of contributing in the system, if you have less than 30 quarters, Medicare Part A cost $461 per month to buy. Generally speaking, those that actually pay for Part A are folks that have not lived in this country during their working years and have been moved here at a later year, and the only way they're going to get coverage past age 65 Part A is to pay a premium for Medicare. And that is, to keep that in mind, Medicare Part A is worth $461 a month. So when people talk about how much they pay for Medicare, the Part A Medicare that is funded through withholding is worth $461 a month. Medicare Part A, and we're going to go into the individual benefits of Medicare Part A in a moment, is basically inpatient. It's called hospital insurance, and it covers inpatient hospitalization and things that generally follow a hospitalization. The second part of Medicare, original Medicare, is Part B. Part B of Medicare, there is no advance funding of Part B. It is funded partially by premiums, but mostly by general tax revenues. Uh, the premium for Part B, is it does, it, there's no work history involved. Uh, three years ago, everybody paid the same premium. Now there are several different premiums being paid. First of all, Premiums are based on your income. Uh, people below $85,000 income as an individual, $170,000 income as a couple, pay one premium. But actually, they pay two this year, and we'll get into that, and we'll go backwards to that. Above those levels, your premium goes up. At the 85, above $85,000 level, it jumps to $153 in some, excuse me, $154 in some sense per month for Part B. Uh, it goes up to as high as $353 in some sense a month, and that's for people with incomes above $214,000 a year as an individual or $428,000 as a couple. That is determined by the Social Security Administration. There's nothing anybody can do about it in terms of appealing. If, if your income data shows them that you are had that income, then they are going to tell you what your premium is. Now, the one thing that we can know and, and, and help people understand is that income data is based on two-year-old income tax information. So the 2010 premium is determined by your 2008 tax information. If you've got more current tax information on file, if your 09 taxes have already been filed, you can ask them to look at that if the income is lower, and they will, and they'll adjust your premium accordingly. And as you go forward, and if your income goes down, your premium will go back toward the norm. Uh, let's go back to the premium for those below $85,000. Uh, this year, there's actually two premiums involved at this level. Uh, in 2009, everybody that was below these income levels was paying one premium, $96.40 a month. There is a rule, a federal law, that says that they cannot raise your Medicare premium more than your Social Security retirement benefit. In 2000, from 2009 and 2010, there was no, cre no increase in the Social Security retirement benefit. 
Therefore, people on Medicare in 2009 who were drawing Social Security retirement benefits did not get a premium increase. For those that were on Medicare but not drawing Social Security retirement benefits, like Winston, their premium went up to $110.50 a month. Uh, if you are new to Medicare in 2010, your premium will be $110.50. And if the state, the QMB portion of the Medicaid program that pays your Part B premium for you, if the state is paying $110.50 a month because the only people that didn't get an increase were those that, who was, Medicare premium was being paid by the Social Security Administration withholding from their Social Security retirement benefit. So the premiums of Part A are pre-funded, B, partially funded by this premium. By law, the Part A B, excuse me, Part B premium that people pay was set to approximate 25% of the actual cost of Medicare Part B services. So if we say the Part B premium in 2010 is 11050, the real cost of Part B services is $442 a month. Nobody, no matter how rich you are, is paying all of that premium. The taxpayer is subsidizing the premium of every single beneficiary on Medicare. Warren Buffett's Part B Medicare premium is subsidized by the taxpayer. It's an unusual thing, and the reason I bring this out is we get a lot, you get a lot of calls, people complaining about $110.50. It went up to $110.50. Well, Medicare A and B between them are worth about $900 a month. And it is, that's what it's worth. If you had to go out at age 65 and buy individual health insurance, that's the ballpark you'd pay. So that's what Medicare Part B covers. What, what does Medicare pay for? And, and Medicare Part B basically is called medical insurance. It pays for physician's charges, including the physician's charges you see while you're in the hospital. Part A actually only pays the hospital bill itself. Physicians bill separately, paid under Part B. Uh, Part B pays for outpatient procedures, lab work, those type of things. I'm going to go through all of this in a moment. Uh, Diana, do you have a question? I've got a question right here. Um, regarding Part A and Part B, for those who don't qualify for free Part A, and uh -huh. that premium of four hundred and forty dollars or four hundred and whatever dollars it was uh -huh. can be substantial for some folks. Can you just elect to take Part B and yeah. pay that premium and not have Part A, or get your hospital coverage elsewhere? Yes, okay. yes. Uh, and, and, and if you ever see somebody with Part B only, mm -hmm. that is why they they have opted not. They obviously did not get A premium free, and they've made the choice not to pay four hundred sixty one dollars a month for Part A services. And, and it, with so much being done on an outpatient basis, they get Part, and what's, what's unusual is they get Part B at the same price as somebody the that average person. Ha has paid into the system. Okay. Right, Thank so you. yes, you'll see people with only A. You'll, usually those are people that uh, get A free, don't want to pay for B. You'll get see with people with just B, those that didn't qualify for A free but want something so they pay for B, and then most people obviously have A and B.